Thank you very much, Governor McKee, Lieutenant Governor Matos, Director Alviti, and all of our uh, colleagues, or my colleagues in uh, local government. Um, appreciate you guys coming. Thank you very, very much. But I think any time we could come together and address our infrastructure needs, especially with some funding, this is a great day. <laughs> but it doesn't surprise me that uh, Governor McKee, as a uh, former local mayor, has chosen to, or whenever he has the opportunity, to help uh, the local communities with uh, our needs. We really, really appreciate that, uh, Governor. Um, I know I also thank you, but on behalf of all of the uh, mayors, managers, and administrators, and all of the communities, we thank you very, very much. Uh, Director uh, Almonte will be uh, filling you in on some uh, statistics, uh, but at this point in time, I would, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you my friend and the governor of the state of Rhode Island, Dan McKee. Thanks, Charlie. <clears throat> it's great to be here in North Province again. I, we just, didn't we just do this? <laughs> huh? We just did this in, uh, here with the, on the lead pipe issue, and it's just great to be here to talk about uh, our Rhode Island Ready budget and, uh, and the dollars that we've appropriated um, towards road improvements throughout the state. I know when I was a mayor, and uh, at the time, um, Senator Connors was able to get a good amount of dollars to help on uh, Nate Whipple Highway and and uh, uh, Diamond Hill Road, High Street area, and sidewalks, if you remember, Mayor, right, Mayor Mutter, um, made a tremendous improvement to our community. Uh, and that's what I had in mind, that we want to keep on fixing uh, the roads here in Rhode Island. And I thank Peter Alvidi, our director. Every time I drive on the section of 295, Peter, that has been paved, after my text with you and you told me that that's happening and the rest of the 295 to the Warwick line, Steve, will be done uh, very shortly. Uh, we know people enjoy the fact that they're driving on good, sm a smooth pavement and, um, and pothole free. So I'm glad to be here with our Lieutenant Governor Matos along with Director Alvidi, uh, Ernie Almonte from the League, you know, all the individuals here from Cumberland with Jeff and. Coventry, uh, Dan, thank you. Brian from Hoppington, uh, Phil Lincoln, Richard uh, Portsmouth, Kate, thank you from Warren, Steve McAllister from Warwick, and um, and Chris uh, from uh, Tiverton, along with uh, with our Smithfield buddies, right? Uh, and and the Mayor Rivera here as well. I think I got most of the people in here. Oh, and the Mayor from Providence, Brett. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, as a former mayor, like I said, uh, we know that the public uh, really wants to see, have us invest in our roads. So as the state uh, works to repair roads and bridges to improve Rhode Island's national infrastructure rankings, we also want to provide support to our municipalities. Uh, this has to be a team effort uh, to get results. And there's no one that can get the work done faster and, and, and more efficiently uh, than municipal leaders. Uh, they're on the ground with a DPW departments. Thank you for hosting us here, Charlie, at your DPW department, uh, working with, uh, for years with our, with our uh, staff, the men and women that uh, plow our roads and keep our streets clean. Uh, we know that they do the work. And our proposed program will make $20 million available to cities and towns to fund important road bridge and sidewalk projects across the state. And we're asking our reps and senators to approve that piece of the budget so that we can get to work and, and provide uh, miles of roads of improvements throughout the state. Nearly 5,000 miles of roads, 80% in our state, are ma maintained by local communities. It's crucial that we ensure these roads are up to the best pop possible standards for each and every motorist who drives in around Rhode Island. I want to thank our congressional delegation again and the Biden administration. We use federal infrastructure investments and the JOBS Act's funding to accelerate 100 road and bridge projects throughout the state, this municipal road program will help keep that momentum going. 
So we're not taking our foot off that uh, gas pedal when it comes to this issue. Uh, so we really encourage uh, the General Assembly to look favorably on this uh, piece of our, leg of our budget uh, and ask them to pass that so that we can get to work in all our communities. Now I'll turn it over to our municipal official who might uh, dislike the, uh, the potholes as much as, as we all do, uh, Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos. Sabina? Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Good morning. Um, just want to say that there's not going to be a biggest champion in the um, state level than Governor Dan McKee when it comes to municipalities. As someone that has the experience of being uh, the mayor of a city, understand the challenges that we go through when we're trying to fix the roads in our um, communities. I want to thank the governor for being a true partner to the municipalities and making sure that the resources are there available to, for them to be able to respond to the needs of our residents. These 20 millions are going to make such a big difference for the, our municipalities. If you had had the opportunity of being at a local government, you understand the challenges that we will go through every time that a resident calls us with a question about a pothole or a road that needs to be repaved or a bridge. God forbid you have a bridge, you're responsible for bridges, right? That's, that takes a lot of resources, and it's really tough for us to budget for that and get that accomplished. This funding is going to help us by dedicating 33% uh, of the funding is going to be covered by the state in order to help the municipalities address those challenges. I want to thank the governor for his leadership, and I want to also, just like he said, ask every voter, every resident in the state of Rhode Island to reach out to your state reps and senator and ask them to support uh, the Rhode Island Ready Budget because we need those resources in, all the, in order to make sure that our communities get the resources that they need, fix the roads, get rid of those potholes. And those are the things that we're doing with this budget. I want to thank the governor for his leadership. I want to thank uh, Mayor Lombardi for hosting all of us here. And also, I want to thank the Department of Transportation for being active and ready to help in this program. And it's my pleasure to turn the podium over to the director of the Department of Transportation, Director Peter Alvini. Director? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Great day to kick off a paving program, huh? <laughs> Love the smell of asphalt in the morning. <laughs> As the governor stated, uh, RIDOT will be the lead agency to guide municipalities in this program. As they go through the process of requesting funds under the new program, we're eager to do so, and uh, we, we intend on creating a smooth, an efficient application process for each of the cities and towns to follow. We'll be with them every step of the way in any way that we can make sure that the funds for their projects are available in a timely manner when it comes uh, time to execute their projects. But why is this important? It's because while RIDOT is working hard, and you, and you see it every day when you're out riding the streets in Rhode Island. There's construction happening everywhere. We're making improvements to our transportation system everywhere. The work that we're doing really only represents about 20% of all of the roads in Rhode Island. The other 80% are municipal roads that are uh, funded and maintained by the local municipalities. The roads right in front of most of the houses of our citizens here uh, is what this program is all about. While this is the first time the state has offered a program like this for cities and towns, RIDOT has successfully worked with many of the cities and towns in the past under partnerships where they contribute a portion of funding and we oversee the projects and the uh, funding distribution. We were often able to work with the cities and towns to expand scopes and to accommodate utility upgrades, uh, extending sidewalks or uh, paving more miles of road. In many cases, it means that projects 
that would otherwise not have uh, gotten done will get done to start sooner than originally planned. In each of those partnerships with the cities and towns, uh, we had, uh, and the towns had, skin in the game. They became active partners and contributors to the project development process, uh, and it helped make those improvements a reality. That's precisely what this new municipal road fund program does. Cities and towns will kick in two-thirds of the funding, while the state of Rhode Island provides one-third. That means that this $20 million program that the governor uh, is proposing will turn into an investment of $60 million in local roads and bridges. It will be a great shot in the arm to fix the local roads and, uh, and bridges throughout the state. Additionally, this level of investment will help support the overall condition of our roads in Rhode Island. Several times a year, you will report on various federal uh, studies that show Rhode Island to be one of the worst states in the country with regard to the pavement conditions here in the state. While much of the data that is being reported on is older data, doesn't reflect a lot of the improvements we're making, the data also considers all of the roads in Rhode Island, which means, as the governor said, 80 percent of the roads being municipal roads, we need to uh, make an investment uh, in those local roads to not only make the improvements locally for the residents and citizens who ride on them, but also to increase Rhode Island's ranking uh, in those national reports. So we look forward to working with all 39 cities and towns throughout the state, and we're at DOT excited and ready to implement this program to make improvements uh, for all of the citizens, including those roads right in front of your own front door. So thanks for coming this morning. Got the honor and privilege of, uh, of uh, welcoming Rhode Island League of Cities and Towns Executive Director Ernie Almonte to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Governor McKee, for inviting me to join you, Mayor Lombardi, Director Alviti, and municipal leaders from across the state to talk about this important initiative. As Director Alviti said, I am Ernie Almonte, and I serve as the Executive Director for the Rhode Island League of Cities and Towns. The League is the only organization in the state that represents and advocates for the needs of all 39 communities. As Mayor Lombardi can attest, it is a priority for all our members to continue to improve local infrastructure. Our members, in crafting the League's legislative and budget priorities, agreed that funding for transportation, infrastructure, and resili resiliency is one of their top priorities. While, while municipalities have seen an influx of federal aid to support our economic recovery from COVID-19, those funds are intended to support our communities through the new challenges they are facing. Federal stimulus funds have allowed communities to make progress but are far short of the investments needed to accommodate a new influx of housing. As the state looks to increase housing stock, cities and towns will need infrastructure to respond to population growth. While we have seen some funding allocated through the Municipal Infrastructure Grant Program, that funding is not sufficient to address the overall need. The League of Cities and Towns appreciates the governor's commitment to the municipalities and the work we are doing locally to serve all Rhode Islanders. Municipal dollars are stretched thin. In many cases, communities don't have access to the resources to begin upgrading 5,000 miles of local roads. The municipal, fund, the municipal road fund will improve safety and the quality of our local roads of particular, uh, of particular importance as we look to increase housing and improve quality of life across the state. Our members are very supportive of the governor's proposal to establish this municipal roads program to support cities and towns in completing local roads, sidewalk, and bridge projects. Governor McKee, 
As the former mayor knows firsthand that municipal leaders often struggle to set aside enough capital improvement funds to address the poor condition of local roads. You've heard it before, with roughly 80% of all miles of road in Rhode Island maintained by cities and towns, this is a wise investment that will benefit the majority of Rhode Islanders, especially in their own neighborhoods. This new program will allow municipalities to magnify the impact of their local dollars and invest up to a third more in municipal infrastructure. The team at Rhode Island Department of Transportation has worked with countless municipalities both in planning and funding of projects. Often this helps expand the scope of projects, but also moves projects from the planning phase to the implementation phase. Our members look forward to working together with Governor McKee, Director Alviti, and the team at the Rhode Island Department of Transportation to invest these funds in our communities. It is now my honor to introduce the Warren Town Manager, Kate Misha. Good morning. Uh, thank you to Mayor Lombardi for hosting us today and for being such a fantastic representative of Rhode Island cities and towns. I'm also thankful today for the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and DOT Director who all understand that the condition of our local roads, sidewalks, and bridges are so important to local residents and business owners. First and foremost, keeping our transportation infrastructure in a state of good repair is a matter of safety for our pedestrians, our bicyclists, and our drivers, but is also a matter of economic development, quality of life, and the ability to age in place in our communities. An accessible sidewalk can enable someone to walk to the store, meaning that they can live independently without access to a vehicle. A road without potholes can mean that a driver isn't spending their paycheck on tires. Maintenance of a local bridge can mean that a neighboring small business isn't negatively impacted when that bridge is eventually forced closed due to poor condition. As our speakers have said today, 80% of Rhode Island's roads are owned and maintained by municipalities. The tiny town of Warren has approximately 43 miles of local roads that local taxpayers are responsible for maintaining. We are doing our best, always, but we need and appreciate the help. I'm very excited today to support this grant program, and I know without a doubt that through collaboration between cities and towns and DOT, we can improve the quality of life for Rhode Islanders in all of our 39 cities and towns. I'm pleased now to introduce uh, Warwick City Council President Steve McAllister. Thank you very much. I'm uh, City Council President Steve McAllister from Warwick, and I want to thank the governor for putting this in his budget. This is the number one issue we hear in Warwick and, and uh, as a city councilor. I was at an egg hunt this weekend. Someone came right up to me and said, Councilman, we have a huge pothole. I don't think it was this deep. He said it was that deep, but, uh, you know, we have a pothole in front of our house. Can you help us out with that? So I actually plugged it. Uh, that I was coming here uh, today. We're going to get to it before uh, this goes through. I, I uh, can tell that resident that. But this is the number one issue. It's a quality of life thing, that, and, and people could see what the taxpayers, are, uh, what their tax dollars are doing. So this is super important, and um, I'm going to be reaching out to the Warwick delegation at the State House, asking them to support this as well. And I, I thank the governor and the municipal leaders here um, for their support on this as well. And at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Mayor Brett Smiley from Providence. Good morning, everyone. Mayor Lombardi, thank you for hosting us today. Uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much for your support of cities and towns. Uh, it is not lost on me that actually the entire budget proposed this year is very fair and supportive of municipal leadership of our cities and towns and a former mayor and a former city council president uh, understand that the decisions made at the local level improve the quality of life for all and none of us can do it alone so we're very grateful for your entire budget and, and here to be very supportive of this proposal we have a um, a philosophy in my administration which is that we're trying to fix things the right way the first time and because of decades of underinvestment in our physical infrastructure, uh, and in the case of streets and sidewalks, patches and fills, it's impossible to fix it 
the right way the first time. The right fix is a full resurfacing, a full repaving, an entire block worth of new sidewalks, which is why this investment is so important. Uh, a couple of the speakers spoke on it, but it's not just the $20 million, it's the additional $40 million that will be levered as a result of it. And hopefully it shows the General Assembly what a wise investment this can be to continue to trigger additional local investment to leverage the state investment. I know that Providence is ready to take advantage of it. Uh, we look forward to working with DOT under the leadership of Director Alviti, who has done an exceptional job of helping rebuild our physical infrastructure throughout the state. And I look forward to a strong partnership in Providence. I know the other uh, mayors and municipal leaders today are excited to put this investment to good work uh, on behalf of our residents. And again, uh, we'll be urging the Providence delegation to support not just this proposal, but your entire proposed budget because of the many good investments it makes in cities and towns across Rhode Island and is particularly helpful and beneficial to the city of Providence. So I appreciate your, uh, your investment and look forward to being with you for a budget signing as all of these good programs turn into law. Thank you.